Well, hi there. I want to do a little more work on this 16 by 20 acrylic portrait of the couple with their cat. I want to show you um, more about the acrylic glazing technique and how you can use it to make your portraits brighter, more vibrant, have more depth, more smooth shading and nuances. Um, it's a really great way to be able to bring your acrylic portraits to life and just save yourself a lot of frustration. Um, I've been using this for many, many years to make my portraits look like they're painted in oils. And uh, so grateful to Norb Cox for teaching me this technique years ago. I want to show you how to do this in your own portraits using this as an example. So just be a little snippet of what I do in the studio on a daily basis. But before I start, let me dive in with a word of prayer. This is a new painting session and I want to just invite God into this process here. Uh, you know, he is the master artist. so just want to uh, ask for his help. So Father, I ask you, bless me as I paint this portrait. Um, apart from you, I can do nothing. With you, I can do all things. So guide every brush stroke, give me wisdom, help me to be able to mix the colors appropriately, get the values correct. Bless the students as they're watching. I pray you'd help them in their portrait paintings or whatever they're working on uh, to do it to their very best ability. Um, give them peace and confidence as they paint and the belief that they can do it, Lord, that you'll help them. So I ask a blessing on this time in Jesus' name, amen. All right, so I have my standard palette here, raw umber dark, burnt sienna, raw sienna, ultramarine blue, alizarin crimson, pyro red orange, Indian yellow, titanium white. And I'll put some matte medium on the palette and this is just clear acrylic without pigment. You can get it pretty much at any art store I use Liquitex or Nova Color, and it uh, dries crystal clear. And you just mix it with your paint like you would with water, only it makes the paint more fluid and gives it a smoother finish than just mixing it with water. Um, now I'm going to just continue to work on this, adding more layers. This is kind of like a Polaroid camera where we just start with a very light sketch and then add colors and value throughout the whole thing. We don't just work in one section and complete it and add all the detail in one spot, leaving the rest of it white. Rather, it's a process where uh, we use multiple layers on top of each other um, and eventually it builds up rich color and depth. You can actually see through these layers. The light shines through um, all the, the acrylic layers. The pigment is activated by the light reflecting off the white primer of the canvas and it gives it much more vibrance and depth. So it's really, it's a cool process and it eases a lot of frustration because you don't have to get it right the first time. You have a lot of opportunities to continue to add shading, color and nuances till you get the look that you want. Um, so I'm going to add, uh, let's see, some burnt, or sorry, romber dark, a little bit of ultramarine blue. I'm using this, uh, size 12 filbert brush and I'm mixing kind of a medium gray and so what's interesting when you look at a glaze on what I call a white card you can see what that looks like and it actually is uh, translucent so you can see the white card where I have some color on there previously and you can see how that light just shines right through and that's what we use is, are these layers, translucent layers, semi-transparent, same thing. So this is the color I'm using, kind of a medium brown. Uh, and I'm just going to put that into her hair and add a little bit of richness to a few spots. So I'm darkening in the upper left corner and I'll show you that right up here. Now, if you want to take a look at the reference photo, this is what that looks like. And this is the part that we're working on right now. You can see that. So we're trying to capture these darker values up here and get some differentiation between this darker shape and then this lighter highlight right here. You see that? And then in the midst of that, we have all these dark pockets, but I'm concentrating on the midtones. All right, so this overall sense of this area here, how it's a little bit darker. Now let's go back to the painting. And we just uh, work some of this in. And work 
some of this in right here. So if you can train yourself to see these different value shapes. In previous videos and lessons I've compared them to um, geographical continents or nations and then states. And if you think of those continents and states, they all have their own shape and boundary. They're a certain size or a certain shape, certain distance from other states or provinces, and, and they all kind of overlap on top of each other, right? I mean, you've got, you know, for example, the United States. Well, first you have the North American continent, and then you have it subdivided into Canada, of course, and the United States. Um, and then from there, and I guess you also have Mexico as well before it gets to Central America. But you have these uh, different locations, right, within there. Then you have the United States, and then you have all the different states, like my state of Wisconsin, and you've got, of course, Minnesota, Iowa, next to us, Illinois, Michigan, and, and you get down to uh, Kentucky and Tennessee, and you move over west to... I mean, it's just these different shapes, and then within these states, like the state of Wisconsin, of course, we have counties, and, you know, we have uh, Eau Claire County, where I live, or Chippewa County, I should say, I used to live in Eau Claire County, and then you have um, Lincoln County, where I grew up, and, you know, and they all have different shapes and sizes, so I'd like you to see these value shapes like that, so see this little triangular shape here that could be for example like um, that could be like a county and then this larger shape here that overlaps on top of it which is a little lighter that could be like the state you know and then this whole section here could be the United States so I mean it's a really maybe strange way of looking at it but it's a metaphor that I think helps you to see these different shapes and if you can see the shapes in your reference photo and kind of simplify them, break them down. Don't just say, oh, I'm painting hair. It's so difficult to paint hair. Rather say, hey, these are just shapes. That's all they are. They're just shapes. And I'm breaking them down into abstract forms, reconstructing them onto my canvas. And if I do it correctly, or as close to correctly as I can, it'll look realistic. It always does. So, just keep that in mind as you're working on this, and there's nothing that's too difficult to paint. Doesn't matter what it is, whether it's, you know, um, hair or whether it's um, embroidery, you know, silk fabric, lace, uh, water droplets, um, an ocean scene. I know we're thinking about portraits, whether it's, you know, whiskers or eyeglasses with multiple reflections or whatever. And there's nothing too difficult to paint when you just break it down to the constituent abstract forms and then reconstruct it. And yeah, it does take some time. It does take some practice to really see these shapes and to begin to really, um, you know, replicate them on your canvas. But I've seen many of my students do that. Some get it sooner than others, but over time they do get it. And when it clicks, it's just amazing to see the light bulb go off and how they can then apply that to all of their paintings. And then it's, and their, their work takes a huge, huge leap. It just, it's not like, it, it grows incrementally, but then once they get that knack, it's just a huge, huge leap. And so I'd love that to happen for you as well. And you know, consider, um, consider checking out my classes on my website at realisticacrylic.com. You can see what I have available. Some are available for free and some, you know, are paid, but I have a whole bunch of classes there to help you um, get from where you're at right now in your portrait painting and uh, become better. So I'd love to share those with you. Realisticacrylic.com. Check that out. All right, so we're just continuing to add some more of these glazes on top and just, I like say, adding more depth, adding more depth, little by little. 
and that's all there is to it. So again, this is the process. This is where we're at in the painting right now uh, with several layers on it. And it's a little more than halfway done, but there's a long, there's, there's quite a ways to go yet. We've got a lot of detail to add, a lot of nuances, but uh, hey, I hope this video helped. I hope it made some things clear for you in terms of the glazing technique and how you can use it to make your portraits, um, again, more vibrant, more realistic. I uh, give you an opportunity to add layer upon layer, nuance upon nuance. Again, check out uh, realisticacrylic.com and I have tutorials there, classes you can check out. Like this video, subscribe, would love to share more with you. And by liking and subscribing, you help me to share this with more artists and create this, uh, this movement of realistic acrylic portrait painters online. So uh, thank you so much for watching. God bless, and we'll see you in another video real soon. Take care.